buttons. That's what he says, isn't yeah. it? Not the buttons. <laughs> it is a photography podcast, I promise you. It may not even sound like one, but today, Stephen and Rebecca, and who have we got? Because they're no doubt going to make some sort of appearance at some point, vocally or visually, so we might as well introduce the little furry friends we have down on the floor. We have George, and we have Albie, and we have Maisie. Three dogs. three dogs. We've got three dogs. So if you're watching and listening and you happen to hear some heavy breathing or panting, <laughs> um, it's not just only Rebecca, it could also be one of the dogs. <laughs> <laughs> um, but today, this is like a part two, but it's like a really delayed part two, isn't it? Yeah, when um, was part one? It was six <laughs> months ago. <laughs> well, we've been going for a year, so it could it, actually, I don't know if it was maybe like 2020. Probably, it probably was this year, but this year feels like so long anyway, so it's... What is, probably, what is this year? Yeah, it might as well have been last year anyway. But anyway, we've eventually got around to doing part two. Um, and this is all about um, stories behind the camera. So looking at a set of iconic images uh, that you may be familiar with, may not be at all. Um, and we're just talking about the, the, bit of the history of the stories behind these images, as to kind of how they came to be. Um, so if you've not listened to part one, then then jump back and, uh, and find that we've got a podcast further down. I, I don't know kind of how far long ago it was. And it's also, um, we did it as a video, didn't we? I think we did. Yeah, I'm sure. Because we, yeah. we showed the images as well, because I appreciate when talking about photographs, it's sometimes easier to understand them by actually seeing them. So um, I'm sure there's a YouTube version of this podcast uh, on our channel. So have a look for that and you'll be able to actually see the images as we're talking about them. And I'll do the same with this podcast as well, because... Um, yeah, we've got like five more images that we're going to have a look at, haven't we? Um, we have do you recognise any of them? Uh, we... Three, definitely. Ooh. Two, possibly. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you a bit about them. We can kind of talk through them. I got a few little notes and points here as well. But as I said, we'll kind of put them up on screen anyway if you're watching this as um, the video version of our podcast. Uh, and if not, we'll um, we'll put a link to a couple of the blogs on iPhotography which covered these uh, images and other ones. So if you want to read about it a little bit more in your own time, then we'll make sure you get all the uh, points for that anyway. So should we just start off? Should we just jump in straight away? Let's go. And going from the top of the alphabet, we're going A for Abraham. So this is about Abraham Lincoln. This is uh, an image just entitled Abraham Lincoln by Thomas Hicks in 1860. So I'll talk you through this a little bit. So it's effectively a composite. Did you know? I, I wouldn't know this one, but I know one of them was a composite. So I knew, I, I didn't know whether it was his one or Winston Churchill's one later on, but I knew someone else ah, stood in yeah. for it. Yeah, it was, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd never known of it until I was doing the research on it. But effectively, the, the image is how you see it. Let's kind of bring it up on screen for us a, a little bit larger. Um, it's an image of Abraham Lincoln, or at least it was Abraham Lincoln as well but effectively what had been done is that an image previously taken of him as a headshot had then been spliced out the image and actually put on top of this other fella's body um, and the other guy is another politician called John C. Calhoun uh, and the reason they did this is because um, Lincoln supporters they didn't necessarily think that Lincoln looked that statesman-like um, so they wanted to kind of portray you know some sort of statesman kind of presidential like view of him um so instead of how he actually looked himself um they kind of got this fella's body they took this portrait of this john c calhoun and then basically put lincoln's head over the top of it because there's, there's not much other difference to it really is there We're no looking no two. the bodies are pretty much the same yeah it's it's pretty much even like the hands and yeah, everything yeah. are the same so it, it literally is just the head which it's pretty impressive to do such sort of a composite at, yeah what in the 1860s it's very well done i don't think my scrapbooks are anywhere near this good <laughs> <laughs> i wonder what version of photoshop this was <laughs> photoshop 1 bc <laughs> excellent yeah but yeah it's it's really kind of unique because it is such an early form of composite and it's not to say that there was the only kind of types of composites that ever went on or editing Image editing went on, you know, all the time in this era. So whether it was just darkening a background or lightening something else in a dark room, different processes allowed you to do it in different ways. So if anybody ever says to you, "Do you hear kind of editing is cheating?" Do you hear yeah, we never used to edit photos. Oh, you we never definitely edited did. Them in my day. We definitely did. Every it's just different. photo, and then that's even like in camera these days. If you shot JPEG. The camera is applying all different sorts edits. of kind of yeah edits automations that that what you're actually taking is then kind of changed by the camera to a degree that it, it, it is edited before you even get to see it on the back of the screen so yeah if anyone ever says that to you 
rubbish. <laughs> it is rubbish. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I mean, it, in that vein, um, there are kind of other, as much as a lot of people thought this was quite a groundbreaking change to, to kind of composite or change somebody's head in a picture, it wasn't the first time necessarily they had been done, or at least it was, it was other variations were done afterwards. Um, notably with uh, General Ulysses S. Grant. Familiar with him? Know his work? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> no. no. Joseph Stalin? Familiar with his Familiar work? Familiar with his work? <laughs> Benito Mussolini. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much all just war people, aren't they? Just kind of All really take... nice, happy positive oh, and figures. Adolf Hitler. Oh, <laughs> He'd had his you know, all of those people that had images of them manipulated to kind of perpetuate their myth or their, their kind of status necessarily. Um but yeah, ha- have a look online for those images. Um I remember like I think it was Ulysses Grant had I don't know if it was the horse that he was sat on was changed, or there was a guy that was holding his horse for him. Um, and they got rid of him because they didn't oh, okay. like the idea of like having like a horse handler there. It was like, look, I can handle my I own horse. I can handle horse. my own horse. <laughs> <laughs> I can do the horse. <laughs> but that, that's our first image, yeah. And it's kind of quite unique because it is kind of a composite. So, um, yeah, kind of quite different. So this is the one that you said, Rebecca. I can do that pose. I can. So for the camera, <laughs> do it again. <laughs> See if you can recognize what picture it is before you even get into it. <laughs> If that didn't give you the best impression, I appreciate people listening for podcasts will <laughs> no, not understand what the heck is going on. It is Al- uh, Arthur Sasser's portrait of Albert Einstein in 1951. Um, so let's bring it up a bit bigger for us here. So yeah, it's the it's kind of a it's kind of a quirky shot of Einstein, and it's the scientific personality of Einstein. Um, you know, people knew about him and then obviously kind of in later years he he's become as famous as, as anything really but this was a very unique portrait for the fact it was taken on his 72nd birthday um and there was loads of smiley pictures of him it's not as if he was a kind of a grumpy person necessarily <laughs> um, I, I don't know personally but just from what i've read um and arthur sass had wanted to kind of really take uh, a different portrait of him um something that was kind of a little bit more unique and you know something that stood out from other images that have been taken throughout the day. Um, so just as Einstein, I think the story goes, as he was kind of leaving the party, he was getting into a car, um, Sass basically kind of asked to kind of take a picture of him. And he, I don't know whether he was drunk or he was just kind of feeling his merriments from his birthday, but he stuck out the tongue and, and it kind of became that portrait of the... It's like the mad scientist, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, especially with his hairdo. It just goes perfectly I think. it does yeah and as, as much as necessarily you know he wasn't crazy necessarily not in a you know a medical sense but <laughs> <laughs> but he was extremely intelligent but it made that idea like you said with the kind of the crazy hair you know the the, the, the warm face and then the big kind of the big bushy mustache as well i think you should grow a mustache <laughs> Oh. And grow your hair. Well, it's Movember, isn't it? He could could do it for Movember. Have a mustache for Movember. Yeah. Oh, I don't think it would work. I think you should. I think you should go full Albert Einstein. Full, full. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got the receding hairline like him, so I think I'm kind of not far away. But see the size of his tongue. That's huge. Uh, our tongue can't go that far. <laughs> Maybe, maybe there is an element of craziness about him. I don't know. But but either way, it was um it was a portrait that Einstein got to see you know later on um and he loved it. He absolutely loved it just because it was so different. It was so you know unique. Something somebody hadn't caught of him before. Um and maybe it showed a little bit more of his kind of his human side to it. He wasn't all that kind of that cold scientist and um. He actually asked for copies of this portrait, um, which he used kind of time and time again to kind of promote himself. And apparently, did you know in 2009 that an original signed copy of the portrait was sold at auction? And guess how much for? Without looking at my screen. (laughs) (laughs) That's the wrong number. (laughs) Something is telling me. Oh, you're tapping into your psychic ability. Mm. I'm telling I go way back. And I feel like... (laughs) I feel like it's around $75,000. You know what? It is bang <laughs> on. $75,000 this portrait was uh, was sold for at auction in 2009. That's that's crazy, your knowledge. It? It's, do you know what? Oh. I feel like Einstein just lives through me it nowadays. Just channels you, And the he? things that I come up with are genius. <laughs> oh my word, wow. I mean, my impression is one thing, but my, my genius is another. I, I look at you and I, th- I think kind of crazy scientists. <laughs> 
maybe less scientist than just the crazy. Just, just crazy. <laughs> well, let's see what you know about our next image. Uh, this is entitled Lunchtime Atop a Skyscraper. This is from 1932 by Charles C. Ebbets. Is this familiar? I do recognise this one. Do you recognise it? Do you know anything about it? Um, there's a lot of controversy, wasn't there? Because it was where the, it was actually this or if it was staged and if it was fake or yeah that. yeah i can yeah a few people had said so and this is um it was the the idea it wasn't fake necessarily um just to clarify that um it was a group of construction workers basically sat having their lunch in the middle of building do you know what building it was empire state Oh, you could have even read it off my screen oh. and you got it wrong nope it's a rockefeller plaza in manhattan um, so yeah, this was taken by Charles C. Ebbets in 1932, and you're right. You know, a lot of people said, "Is it a stunt? Was it real?" Um, but yeah, it, it is literally kind of real. These guys are just sat on this giant steel girder, and I can't see a single bit of like you know safety ropes or anything like that. Can you see anything that like looks like they're actually tied onto that girder? Did anyone care in 1932? <laughs> I would care in 2021 if I was being held up by a girder that was more than six feet off the ground. So and that is high. This high is, high. oh, you can see from, yeah, like the background, it's like you've got to be hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of feet, you know, up in the ground. And even like just the ropes in the corner here, they just don't look substantial enough to be holding up an entire building. So kudos for people like this. Um, but yeah, you know, it's it's kind of a very, very unique image of these, how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten, ten and a half. Ten and a half. <laughs> <laughs> ten and a half people uh, um, that are all sat there, you know, just, you know, having lunch as you would on a park bench. And it's so I'd be eerie. Shaking like a leaf with fear. Are you not, are you not good with heights? I, um, so far, I can go up to about 20 foot. That is not as well higher than 24. You never know. They may have actually had like a trampoline. It may be utterly fake. <laughs> we may have even been told porkies on this one. But but yeah, I, I would freak out. I'd freak out going up in the building now it's completed yeah. and yeah. being indoors. No, it's it's not for me. But um, yeah, to, to kind of to prove the point that it was real, um, apparently there's a guy here on this picture and I need to kind of uh, just check my notes here to find out which one he was. Man to the right um, of the picture. So I guess in, he's probably the one that's at the end here with his cap down low. And he's called Gustav, or Gusti, Gusti Popovich uh, from Slovakia. And in 1932, he sent his wife, uh, Maria or Mariska, um, a postcard with the picture on um, which he said, don't worry, my dear Mariska, as you can see, I'm still with the bottle. <laughs> <laughs> so has he got, oh, maybe it's the one next to him, a couple further in, that's actually got like a cup in his hand. Um, so yeah, supposedly, yeah, the, one of the actual construction workers had seen the picture and then sent it over to his, uh, his wife in Slovakia. But yeah, it's, it's incredible shots. It is brilliant. It's, it's, you know, and not only to kind of, you know, just sort of casually be having your lunch up there, but then for the photographer to go up and say, you know, I, I want to take a picture like this. They must have like seen them do this, you know, because I'm day guessing it was like day. a day-to-day -day yeah. thing, isn't it? This isn't something you just go, do you know what, Stephen, should we have our lunch <laughs> on the beam today? <laughs> you know, I don't know where like the, the kind of the building is attached to which side, because like you'd want to be the guy that's closest Nearest. to the main part of the building, So I wonder, you? is this, oh no, I thought that was a reflection, but I think that's just part of the um Oh, right, the, yeah, the background, the background yeah, yeah. God, no, I don't think I'd want to be any of them. That just, it just freaks me out, really, like the lack of safety equipment. But as you say, it got built. I don't know if any of them died. Um, <laughs> well, well they might be dead now. Well, it's 1932. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I'd imagine many of them are. Years ago. <laughs> That's it. So let's move on. Um, oh, you could do the pose for this next image. I think this would be a good one. I can one. do this pose as well. You can do this one. So again, okay. see if you can guess the picture they're going to talk about from Rebecca's pose. I need oh. to worry. Oh, 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 yeah. Oh, very good. Now you look like the demon headmaster. Excellent. <laughs> it's the same thing. <laughs> so if you didn't know, if you didn't guess it from that wonderful portrayal, um, this is Steve Jobs by Albert Watson. And this is only in 2006. Um, mm. A lot of the other pictures we've been talking about are from uh, quite a few years ago, but this one's, you know, in the, in the relativity. relativity. Um, it's all uh, fairly recent. So do you know much about this image to begin with? Not particularly. I recognise the image because I know it was the image that Apple used to announce his death. Yes. And was it on his book cover as well, possibly? I don't know. I don't, I've never read. I'm not really one for reading that much, uh, in honesty. But 
I wouldn't be surprised because he did really, really like the portrait. Mm. And like Einstein, he was he was a big fan, and I think he commissioned it. I think you, you're totally right. I think I've written down later on that. Uh, there we go. So Jobs said it was the best portrait that was ever taken of him, and I Aww. think you're right to say that Apple went on to use this image um, to announce the death of Jobs in 2011. So yeah, it's, it's kind of quite it's quite a popular image. Um, I'm sure many people would have seen it already. But just to give you a bit of background, it was taken by Albert Watson. Um, it's a Scottish photographer hired by a magazine to capture a series of images um, about Steve Jobs, or at least kind of it was a, I think it was a series of images to capture portraits of uh, wealthy business owners and powerful people in America and thus obviously Steve Jobs at the time was one of them. Um, did you know he kind of hated cameras? He was very camera shy in that no. sense? No. Well, no, he I was. So it made the job supposedly a little bit harder for Albert Watson. And there's a little bit of an interview online. At, um, I think if you YouTube Albert Watson, Steve Jobs, you can probably actually get a little bit of information about this uh, from the horse's mouth because he, he gives a bit of an interview to the backstory of the portrait. Um, because the initial idea was that he was obviously he was just scheduled to take um, an hour, or at least he'd had half an hour of Steve's time to to do the portrait. And Steve Jobs come in super flustered and busy as he's doing, creating iMacs and iBooks and <laughs> iPhones, and I I don't care. Anyway, um, I dogs. <laughs> I, I dogs. <laughs> I dogs already exist. I'm them <laughs> no, that that's like kind of guide I dogs, dogs, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I can't have that. Anyway, he was doing busy, busy, busy. Um, and so what Albert Watson had decided to do is to kind of put Steve Jobs at ease to begin with. He said, I know I've got you for an hour, but this is only going to take half an hour. And straight away, if somebody's like was going to you to say, you know, if you hated like injections or whatever, and you're like thinking you were going to go after like three or four injections and they come in, no, it's only one. You'd feel a lot happier, wouldn't yeah. you? Yeah, yeah, you do. So his this psychological approach, his reverse psychology to basically be an icebreaker just to make kind of jobs relax a little bit and the portrait is super simple you know as you see it he's looking straight direct towards the camera nice clean white background one single light that's illuminating the shot and he's basically just got his as you did so delicately posed that little kind of hand under the chin do you know what watson said to him to get him to pull that pose because it wasn't it wasn't like set up to say do this do that do that he just basically gave him like a little kind of thought no he said to him he said, I want you to look in the camera, no smiling, and I want you to imagine that you're looking at three or four people who disagree with you, but in your head, you know you're right. And Steve Jobs said, that's easy, I do it every day. <laughs> and that was it. And it was as simple as that. And it had this beautiful kind of authoritative look, these lovely catch lights, no reflections or, or kind of glare, glares in his eyes, uh, in his glasses. Awesome. You know, you can't even see the lenses. They almost just look like the, the, just the rims. Um, but it's such a kind of clean portrait. Are you a big Steve Jobs fan? Are you a big Apple fan? Mm, yeah. no. I, I I was for a while, then wasn't. And I think I think kind of since he's died, I I think a lot of their technologies. It's not. I mean, they've done some cool things, but they've never kind of pushed on. I think as much as he necessarily would. Yeah. They certainly haven't created eye dogs yet. So well, exactly. I'm not a fan <laughs> until there's eye dogs. Trademark, copyrighted. Yeah. They they won't do it. <laughs> <laughs> right, so we move on. We'll have our last portrait we're going to look at, and you've definitely got to do the pose for this one. If anyone can get this from Rebecca's pose, then well done, you win. <laughs> 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 oh, that's actually better. That's that's actually way better than I kind of hoped and thought it would be. Um, yeah, if you didn't happen to get that from the pose, um, this is Winston Churchill by Yusef Karsh in 1941. Um, do you know much about Winston Churchill? Um, I know. He well, was given the fact that you're best friends with <laughs> yeah. Albert Einstein and yeah, me and well Einstein connected. always talked about Winston. And we, <laughs> said, we honestly said he looks a little bit like a British bulldog. <laughs> <laughs> Well, they say all babies look like Winston Churchill, which <laughs> I think I think is true to a large degree. It's that... the grumpy face, <laughs> the lack of hair. Yeah. yeah, that's it. That's it. Yeah, I get this. But this was it was a portrait that was actually taken in the middle of World War Two. Um, so yeah, it's nineteen forty one. So it's when like the, the fighting is at its peak, um, and it, so it wasn't necessarily that Winston Churchill had said, "I want a portrait of me taken." What great time! <laughs> yeah, it's like well, why not we'll do a vanity I'm project? Not busy. <laughs> Yeah. Um, uh, but you'll, you'll kind of understand like you know his, his kind of displeasure is a little bit like Steve Jobs he wasn't kind of one for the camera um, but he was over in Canada 
meeting the parliament there, the government there, and they had had his, his people, you know, all those other people that work behind the scenes had arranged the shoot. So he knew about it somewhat, um, but um, but he didn't necessarily know what was entailed, who was taking the pictures necessarily, how long it'd be going on for, I think. Um, so basically kind of he, he wandered into this room uh, and kind of car should start turning on all his lights and whatnot. Um, and basically uh, he said, I think this was Churchill saying, yeah, sorry, this was Carr saying to Churchill. He said, sir, I hope you will be fortunate enough to make a portrait worthy of this historic occasion. Uh, and in short, Churchill's response was, why was I not told? Which apparently uh, quite a few people had turned and started laughing because of this. Um, so maybe he wasn't kind of as fully informed as you think, you know, someone would be if they're going to have their portrait taken. So maybe he knew a little bit less about this than even Steve Jobs did about his mm. portrait. Um do you like the picture? It's a nice portrait. It is. It's really nicely lit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I do like it. I like it in black and white as well, which is obviously... I don't cool. know if they had many options yeah, in 1941. Well, but I like the, the backlight behind him as well, so there's a bit of separation in the background. Yeah. I think it's very characteristic and it does kind of show the the stress on his face. Bless him. Well, this is it. I mean, he normally you see kind of Churchill, or if you think of Churchill, you think of that kind of iconic peace sign and and well it's not actually the peace sign wasn't it he was given the the v's to the camera <laughs> but he didn't know what it was he didn't realize it had an alternative meaning oh, no. um that you know peace was to have your hands kind of facing outwards as well but to have it the other way around obviously meant something else um but supposedly he didn't actually know about it is, is another story but yeah the the ever-present cigar that mm-hmm. churchill would kind of always be be photographed with Karsh wanted to do something a little bit different, like um, Albert Sass with, with Einstein. Um, sorry, Arthur Sass. I was thinking Albert Einstein. Albert Einstein. Yeah, <laughs> mixed up now. Arthur Sass wanted to do something different with Albert Einstein, as did Karsh did with Churchill. Um, so he wanted them to take it out. And kind of Karsh was basically, he didn't want to say, sir, can you just take it out? He was hoping that Churchill would do it on his own back. But he was starting to run out of time a little bit and there was only so much he can kind of fiddle with lighting, etc. Um, so basically he just <laughs> walked up to Churchill, asked for his forgiveness and yanked the cigar right out of his mouth. <laughs> and it's, and then he basically kind of ran back to the camera, took the shot and it's that kind of disapproving, <laughs> peed off How look that he's got on his face to say like, you've just walked up to like, you know, Winston Churchill. One of the biggest world leaders. Exactly. Yanked the cigar out of his mouth and then took the portrait. But you're right. I, I think it fully encapsulates the, the stress, the, the kind of anger and the weight of the world literally, you know, is on his shoulders here. Yeah. Um, and the way that he's kind of got his hands on his hips looking like he, he's broadening those shoulders um, looks like a very stressed character. But it was deemed to be such a, a great encapsulation of, as you say, kind of a, a wartime hero uh, in many people's eyes. But um, but yeah, I think that was a kind of a good selection of images that we've, we've looked at there, isn't it? We've, I agree, uh, yeah. We've got a nice set. So like I said, if you haven't uh, watched or listened to the first part of this podcast, then please do. You may have to kind of scroll back a bit because I think it is kind of quite a few episodes back. <laughs> And um, do you think there'll ever be a part three, maybe in another year or two? Possibly, possibly <laughs> in another year. I'm sure we could dig out another five images or so. I think if you pick out the pictures, I will do the poses for you next time. Oh, I like that challenge. No bikini shots. <laughs> but if there are any other portraits, any other pictures that um, you'd like to submit, you know, if you're listening or watching and, you know, think we can find a bit of a backstory about it or we want to kind of add a bit of a backstory and tell us about it it'd be great to put out onto a podcast so um get in touch how do they get in touch with us rebecca uh through our tutor inbox so you can email us tutor at iphotographycourse.com uh, you can also find us on social media we're on facebook instagram we're on pinterest twitter uh, youtube, YouTube. Even Everywhere. places that don't exist, you know, yeah. with, uh, well, we're in the metaverse now with Mark Zuckerberg <laughs> yeah. has thrown us all into. You find us there. Um, but if, yeah, if you want to know a little bit more about us, uh, then there should be a link in the description. If you go to www.ivotography.com forward slash podcast, you can find offers, information there about our courses, our memberships and everything that we do. Um, if you've not kind of come across us before, but please keep following and subscribing. Um, if this is the first time you've been listening, thank you so much for keeping with us. And there'll be more to come. There will be, yes. We've got a new podcast episode generally kind of every week. So tune in for our next episode. And thank you very much for watching and listening. Bye. Thank you.